Hello and welcome to Insert Game. Recently I took a little trip and I came across a video game history expo. So here's a few pictures and some videos from that, like this computer space, which is really awesome to see in person. I uh, really, really want one now that I've seen it in person. Right across from that was this Police Quest game by Sierra on Floppy, which you don't see very much anymore. So that was really cool to see. And then across from that was this large Nintendo controller set up so you can actually play Super Mario Brothers. Here I am comparing the D-pad to my hand so you can see the, how big it is. Say so I got, you know, average size hands. So of course when you see a controller like that and it's set up to play, well you must play. So here I am trying to play <laughs> this humongous controller, uh, trying to take some video so I could share with you guys my experience. It was not the easiest thing to do, but it was very fun to try. The controller itself had a touch lag to it. Not sure if that's due to the controller itself or if it was the emulation they were using. I'm very like 99% sure this is emulation and not actually a Nintendo but it was really cool to experience this like look at the size of that controller absolutely massive I really want one I got my wife to kind of take a little bit of uh, video for me here so you kind of get a better idea of how big that controller was um, so yeah I played a few levels of Mario Brothers here. Not well, but I did play a few levels. That was really, really fun. Yeah, and I really enjoyed that. Until I looked across the room. And I see this. And oh my god, did I just run over to this and... Yeah. An extremely large Nintendo 64 controller. I love the Nintendo 64, so this was great. I uh, spent a little bit of time here. As you can see, the, the analog stick was its actually like an arcade stick, is what they use. Um, not quite as, you know, fine-tuned as the a normal uh, N64 controller, but it worked pretty well. So I went through the whole first level of the game. Uh, using this controller and it, it worked really well so I was pretty impressed by that and sorry for the bad camera work here but I'm shooting it myself and trying to play the game myself all at the same time so then just a little bit across from that my wife found this large Game Boy which she automatically wanted to play because it had Tetris on it so here she is playing some Tetris sadly I didn't get a chance to try this machine out myself because she spent quite a bit of time here so it was really good to see that she found something that she was enjoying as I found a few things that I enjoyed And then I hear, Daddy! So I go to investigate what my daughter's up to. And this is what she's up to playing some Sonic. I mean, how awesome is that? So this controller is not quite as impressive as it was just kind of outlined, but the three buttons and the start was all there. So, you know, the outline of the controller was pretty cool. And then I found this adventure game by Atari. It had just the one stick in the button. It was pretty cool. I did try that a little bit. Didn't get very far. And then I seen the Magnavox Odyssey, which I always wanted. And that console is a lot larger than I thought it was. And here are the overlays for the TV. So, I mean, that was awesome to see.
playing mist with a roller ball with the roller controller and one button felt perfect I really enjoyed my experience uh, I felt so right just to play just to roll the cursor around the screen and just hit the one button to explore perfect setup and I did spend a little bit of time right here playing some Space Invaders and here it's showing you the original artwork on the arcade machine it's just two directions left and right one button to fire extremely simple but very fun game I love Space Invaders And later on, as we were waiting for the ferry, we were taking the ferry back home, I come across this Golden Axe arcade machine. So as you do, I dropped in a few quarters and had to play a few rounds of this. Arcade machines are getting harder and harder to find, so when you do find them, like Put a quarter in, give it a go. It's a unique experience. So I did play this for a good little while. I think we had about 15 to 20 minutes to kill before the fairy got there, so I spent all my time pretty much playing Golden Axe. Uh, glow of the CRT or the controls I don't know but an arcade machine is just it's just a fun experience here's a picture of the golden axe machine and they also had a uh, Capcom bowling there as well and junior Pac-Man which sadly didn't work so I didn't get to check that one out as well as bottom of the ninth, which is really awesome to see. So here they are, all in a row, stuck in a corner, wanting someone's attention. And actually, on the ferry going home, they had a Miss Pac Man machine. Here I am putting in the code so we can play just regular Pac Man on it, because you can either choose Miss Pac Man or Galica. But if you put a code in, then you, you can play just normal Pac Man on the machine as well. So we did that, so we could play Pac-Man. And as you can see, they have a, the speed set up uh, quite a bit here. Pac-Man's just flying around the maze. The white ghost. And here's my daughter playing Galaga. And actually, she's pretty good at this game, and she seems to like it quite a bit, so I'm pretty happy about that. She knows the trick to get captured, and then you get your, uh, you know, you get twice the firepower because you have, you know, a bigger ship. And you shoot that down, so, yeah, pretty awesome. And then we actually just, you know, played Miss Pac Man. And as you can see, it's flying around here pretty quick, too. Which made it just a little bit more tricky, but just a little bit more fun as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for watching.